Me, male 44, and my soon-to-be ex-wife, female 39, been married for 11 years. No kids. We were a pretty chubby couple until two years ago, when I had a blood test, and it came out that I was prone to contracting diabetes, gout, and hypertension. It really scared me, and we both bit by bit started to have a very healthy life. I went from 117 to 85 kilogram in my wife, let's call her Jane, from 83 to 65 kilogram. We felt great, and needless to say I never developed those diseases. We attended to a gym almost daily in the afternoon where AP worked as a coach. Let's call him Baldy. When my wife started getting in shape, I noticed most guys turned to see her. I felt so proud of her. She's quite pretty, and she has great legs. Of course, Baldy was no exception. I've noticed that Baldy likes to look at women. I've seen him doing it several times, and he likes to show off how ripped he is. When Jane and I were regulars at the gym, I noticed she was enjoying the attention she got from men. Once, we were using the elliptical machines, in front of them there is a cable machine. Baldi took off his t-shirt and started doing crossovers. I turned to Jane with my face of, can you believe this guy? But she was staring at him and she wet her lips. I saw Baldi and I swear he was grinning. I felt crushed. I mean, I was getting in shape, but I am not as muscular and fit as he is. When we were driving home, I made a comment about Baldi showing off and Jane said, really? I didn't notice. I told her you were staring. She said, I don't remember. I must have been thinking about something else. I shrugged it and kept driving. But from there on, I noticed they were talking more frequently at the gym. Some weeks later, Jane was doing squats using the Smith machine. Suddenly, Baldy went to help her. Isn't he nice? He was grabbing her by the waist, and I got angry. She finished the first set, and I got there and told him in a not nice way. I got it from here. Baldy just simmelt and told me, no prob, buddy. He calls everybody buddy, and walked off. Jane knows me very well, and when she heard my angry tone, she said, my God, OP. I told her, we'll discuss this at home. At home drama blowed up. She called me immature and jealous. I told her I noticed he was trying to get into her pants. She said that she knows that, but she would never cheat on me. I said then why she let him touch her, and she said she didn't want to be rude. About an hour later arguing, we agreed to change gym. So we went to another place to do exercise, but Jane was resentful at me in the following months. Her argument was that I don't trust her. On the third month after we changed gym, a very good opportunity opened up in my job. But in the afternoon, we discussed it, and I took it, and we had to attend the gym at different hours. I went in the morning and Jane in the afternoon. This is when it all went south. Jane's resentment increased, and we barely speak. I send her messages telling her about my day, that I miss her memes, but she rarely replied or just, yes, oak, same here, ha ha ha, I was very worried, and proposed couple therapy. She said I was the one who needs therapy because I'm the one with trust issues. I agreed. I was so desperate to fix our marriage that I even thought it was all my fault. So the following year, 2022, I went to therapy but Jane's behavior didn't change. We weren't intimate anymore. She never was in the mood. I snooped to her phone but didn't find anything out of the ordinary. I looked into her car for a second phone. Nothing. I checked her phone again to see her map history. It only showed me house, work house, gym house. Whenever I tried to talk to her, she just said she feels that she's having a 40s phase. It'll pass. I never had any evidence of cheating, so I continued working and worrying. We live in a condo. The security guard, a very cheerful man called Mr. P, greeted me. We chat a lot. He was touching his shoulder and told me yesterday he had to move a heavy sofa, and he has some pain today. I was sympathetic, and he dropped the bomb. Maybe you can arrange a meeting with your massagist. I told him who. He said the guy who came yesterday to massage Mr. Jane. It took me a second to process this. I told him, do you have a video of him? I think he noticed I was pale and hurried to show me. 
Guess who? Baldy, of course. He has come a few times to massage my wife. I took the day off and started investigating. I asked a co-worker for his car, and in the afternoon I followed Jane. She parked her car at the mall where the gym is, and there is Baldy waiting for her. They giggle and behave like a couple. Kisses, hugs, and I feel nearly to tear. They walk a couple of blocks and go into a residential area. I tried to follow them with my phone ready to record, but the guard stopped me and asked, Can I help you? I just said, What a nice couple. Do you know them? He said he thinks they are newlyweds, but can't tell me anything else. I called Jane, but never answered. I went to her car in the mall and wondered why that place doesn't show on the map. I dial again, and I can hear her phone inside her car. That's why. I also found out Jane hasn't attended the gym in eight months. I didn't know that the previous night was the last day I slept with Jane in the same bed. I returned the car and went home, and called my parents. Fortunately, my dad answered, and I told him everything. I was crying, and he comforted me and told me to get evidence. Obviously, my marriage is over, and I need all I can gather while he'll contact one of his friends who is an excellent divorce lawyer. Jane called me when saw the two missing calls. I just told her I was already at home, and she told me, I'm on my way from the gym. My butt is killing me. Yeah, I can guess. When she saw me, she asked, what happened? Why did you cry? I don't know how, but I was mentally focused. I smiled and told her I got the flu. That's why I left work early. Don't come near me. It might be the bug I'll be tested tomorrow. I'll sleep in the spare room. She agreed. I cried silently and didn't sleep a wink. Nearly midnight, I heard her giggling. I guess she's messaging Baldi that I didn't find any evidence of contacting another man. Then it hit me. Why didn't I see it earlier? I bet AP is disguised as one of her female co-workers. In the morning while Jane was in the shower, I took her phone and created a session in my laptop and put her phone back in the same place. We both can unlock our phones. The Cessison works while a phone is close to my laptop or in the same Wi-Fi account. Then I saw it. Under a female name, the profile picture was a dumbbell. I entered and most of the conversations were deleted. I guess they use work words as code in case I snooped. Can you deliver the papers in my desk? I know she doesn't have a desk at work. Going to the meeting. Where are you? On the top of them, boss is in his office. He's clueless, pretty clever. I guess I am boss because I know her boss is a woman. Jane got out of the shower and saw me. You look worse. Why don't stay with your parents? I denied the idea thinking of getting evidence. After Jane went out, I contacted my dad and gave me the name and number of the lawyer. I called him and explained everything. He told me the captions I took from my laptop are useless. They don't have any factual evidence since is not AP's name and she was smart enough to leave pieces of conversation that looks pretty innocent. I can take pictures of them at the mall, but she can argue they are just good fellas and I can't invade into the residential area without permission because it might get me into more trouble. At work I was in zombie mode, thinking how to get evidence. I might install secret cameras in my house, but Baldy rarely goes to my home and Jane might find them. Unless. I'm out of the picture. I texted Jane and told her I'm positive of the bug and I'll stay at my parents because I might need help. She liked the idea and told me she would miss me but she'll call me every day. When I hung up, I called my dad and my brother. When I got home, she had already packed a suitcase for me. She was so eager of getting rid of me. I told her I'll take my laptop, and then I checked her messages. Boss will be out of the office, wanna come to my desk. She sent this message almost after I told her I was positive to the bug. Good she bit. We didn't had dinner, no kisses, no hugs. I noticed her watching her watch twice. From the door I told her, I'll miss you. I was expecting her to shut the door on my face, but she walked me to my car, and I was gone. My dad and brother were outside the building waiting for Baldy to appear, but he didn't show up. After half an hour, I thought why did she walk me to my car? Of course, 
because Baldy was already inside the building waiting perhaps inside her car. It would be very suspicious if her massagist came at this hour. I came back, hurried to my house and entered silently. I heard music coming from the bedroom and the moaning. Next to the door there is a sofa, his and her clothes were on it. I put my phone to record and opened the bedroom door and there she was, my wife. The love of my life for eleven years and all four and Baldy behind her. I got a very good seconds of both of their faces when they saw me open the door. Jane screamed and cover herself with the blanket. Baldy went alpha male immediately walking naked towards me. I took a shot of him doing raw my wife. He yelled aggressively at me, why don't go for a walk buddy? I hit his troth with my hand opened. I saw this movement in the Mel Gibson movie Ransom. The next second Baldy was coughing and gasping kneeling on the floor. I yelled get out of my house and kicked him out. I threw his clothes at him when my dad, brother and Mr. P were arriving to my house. I told them I'll take it from here and closed the door. Jane was still on the bed covering herself. She was trembling. I told her I have never hurt you nor will I get dressed. I'll wait for you in the living room. While I was waiting I sent the video to my lawyer and he answered, I'm sorry for you, but jackpot. A few minutes later Jane showed up. She couldn't see me in the eyes. I started recording the conversation. I asked why. She didn't answer. Was I such an awful husband to you? She started crying but didn't answer. Do you love him? She shaked her head, but no words. I stood up and hit the table. Say something, Jane. Damn it. She opened her eyes wide and started trembling again, like a puppy when is scared. I have never yelled at her before. I sat and talked calmly. My lawyer will contact you for the divorce. Get a lawyer, she finally spoke. We can fix this. Fix what? Our marriage was over since Baldy was on the picture and you choose him over me. It was a mistake. No, it wasn't. It was a choice. You chose, and this is the consequence. What did you think would happen when I find out? Silence again. Go to your sisters and tell her the truth or I will show her the video. She went to the bedroom and started packing. I followed her and watched. Since two days ago, I was trying to convince myself my wife is long gone. The person who I shared my house with is not my wife. But seeing her, putting her clothes inside the suitcase neatly, with her gracious movements, and those little things I love of her hit me hard. I went to the spare room and started ugly crying. I heard when she closed the main door. She picked her clothes that were on the sofa. She made the bed where I caught them, and I dropped on the floor. So much later I called my dad. He told me Baldy wanted to press charges, but Mr. P told him he didn't sign in. So he's trespassing. The condo can sue him. He dropped it and went out. My nosy brother pressed his ear on the door, and my dad took him from the other ear to his car. I was exhausted. The previous days I didn't sleep well, so I almost passed out on the spare room. Next morning my phone had a lot of Jane's messages apologizing and asking for a second chance. I just blocked her. My Sile called me. Apparently Jane hasn't told her what happened, just that we're fighting. I guess it's good my FIL is not alive to see Jane's behavior. She was the youngest and his favorite. And Lyle has senile dementia. All this happened a week ago. Next week, Jane is going to be served. Update. Hi everybody. I'm back with a juicy update. You'll enjoy this as much as I do. I'd like to cover some points before start the update. First, I want to thank everybody who contacted me and gave me advice, congratulate me or just to let me know they care. I've read from other posts that the support you get is mind-blowing, but it's the first time I experience so much care from strangers. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Second, as you can guess, English is my second language, so I messed up in some sentences and confuse prepositions. Sorry about that. Also, I wrongly said Jane was doing sit-ups, she was doing squats. Third, to those who think my story is fake, you are entitled to think whatever you want. I just hope my testimony helps someone in the future 
as much as others have helped me. Fourth, about how I hit AP. It was not a fancy ninja punch, just a chop in the throat that, frankly, it was lucky I reacted before Baldi did. I won't lie, seeing him on the floor coughing felt great. Fifth, some of the readers found a post I made an ask and ask credit a month before D-Day. It never got it posted because I didn't understand the rules of the community, and today it isn't important anymore. A quick summarize. Jane and I were trying to be parents for 10 years. On the eighth year, we saved enough money to buy three opportunities in the most expensive and successful reproduction clinic here in my country. All three failed. Jane started her affair during the third one. That's the clinic where my blood was tested and adding the history of diseases from my family. They gave me the probabilities of developing diabetes, gout, hypertension, and having strokes. I should thank them. Someone mentioned that Jane intentionally aborted in the third shot because it might be AP's baby. Well, that's not possible, because for her it's almost impossible to conceive naturally. The embryos were fecunded in vitro and then implanted directly in her womb. I tried to repost my question, but she came and told me, I don't want to have kids anymore so I dropped it. I am sure Baldi doesn't have anything to do with her decision. This is important for later. Let's continue with the update. It's been 12 days since D-Day. What have I been doing from there? D-Day plus one. Friday. I had a nice chat with Mr. P. He confessed he faked his shoulder pain. He just wanted to warn me about Baldi. Also, he told me a very nosy neighbor saw when I kicked Baldi naked from my apartment. Surely in a week all condo will know my situation. My brother came to help me change the lock of the door. When he left I felt so alone and cried a lot. I called my job to ask for a day off. At night I spoke to my lawyer. He said he's making the divorce papers. He couldn't start until he had the evidence. So my divorce will be divorce by mutual consent. That's smoother than uncaused divorce. That's longer and pretty nasty. Also, he told me not to share the video. Jane will be served in two weeks. Sayel called me, but I told her to ask Jane why we're divorcing. The day plus two, Saturday. Sayel came and I showed her the video I drove her home and saw Jane's car. When I got home, I still felt crushed and cried some more. D day plus three, Sunday. I visited my parents. My mom cried with me. She really loved Jane. My dad had a chat with me about my money, properties, and stuff. When I returned home, Mr. P told me Jane and Baldi showed up. I guess they are going to make public their relationship now that the cat is out of the bag. But strangely, they came at different times. Jane came in the morning. She parked her car and saw mine wasn't there. Tried to enter my house, but her key doesn't work anymore. Then she asked Mr. P if he knew where I went. He didn't know and told her Mr. O.P. gave me this for you, my attorney's card. She kept it and left. Baldi came in the afternoon and first asked to see Jane. Mr. P told him Mr. Jane, emphasis on Mrs., doesn't live here anymore, then asked to see me, and Mr. P told him Mr. O.P. is away. No idea when he'll return, and he left. I guess they both are not in contact yet. I wanted to ask about Jane. Is she sad? Did she look healthy? Did she ask about my well-being? But then I remembered D-Day and just thanked and say goodnight to Mr. P. When I got home, I cried a lot again. D-Day plus four, Monday. I didn't want to, but something I learned from all you champions is to hit hard the gym. So I looked for a new gym near my job and had a good session. I felt pretty good. Then I returned to work. At home I didn't cry this time and start taking out all Jane's pictures. D-Day plus five. Tuesday. Had a meeting with my lawyer to review my assets. Fortunately, my dad made Jane sign a prenup, so she can't touch anything I had before we got married, my house mainly. All remaining stuff gets divided 50-50, and I can get a compensation for her adultery. As compensation, I'm gonna take out alimony. I can fight for all the stuff, but everything reminds me of her, and I want to start anew. When I left home I heard whispers, I turned my head, 
and saw two neighbors that immediately pretended they didn't see me. They walked in front of me and jeeted me. I knew this would happen. Ater that I went to the gym and work. This repeats all week so I'm gonna omit. D-Day plus 6. Wednesday. Nothing interesting. I only have Facebook as social media. I ignore all DM asking me to contact Jane. I closed it and opened Reddit and had a nice time reading about all you champions that overcome what I have been experiencing. I felt better, so I thought of sharing my own experience. The day plus seven. Thursday, I started writing. I posted it before going to the gym. When I was at work, it amazed me how many people were reacting to my story. I answered some comments. D-Day plus 8, Friday, I was reading comments and answering all morning. I was smiling, feels good to be appreciated. Two comments stuck in my mind that I didn't think about. 1. Report AP to my old gym, and 2. My home is tainted, I need a fresh start. So before I went to the gym I looked for real estate agents to sell or rent my house. I'm not comfortable here anymore. I haven't entered to my bedroom since D-Day. I've been sleeping in the spare room. I don't want to live like this. D-Day plus 9. Saturday. Since Jane would come and bother me, I decided to spend the day outside. She did come. Then she visited my parents and brother. They just texted me Jane came. I answered thank you. I don't want to talk about her yet. D-Day plus 10. Sunday. I spend the day with my parents. We visited a town two hours from the city and had a blast. I don't know if Jane came. My dad told me not to sell my house but to rent it. I agree and went home. When I got home Mr. P told me Baldy came in the afternoon and alone again. He asked for me, but Mr. P told him I'm away. He left without a word. D-Day plus 11. Monday. Yesterday Monday morning I went to my old gym. I was not sure if I'd meet Baldy, he worked in the afternoon, but he was screwing my wife in the afternoon so I thought he's changed his shift. He was nowhere. I asked to talk to Frank, the gym owner. While I was waiting for him, I met an old janitor I used to chat with. He told me to say hi to Miss Jane. I guess my new normal is to tell everybody we split up. I smiled at him. Frank finally received me. I asked about Baldy. He told me Monday is his day off. He asked for more hours, and now he works from Tuesday to Sunday in the morning. Then I explained the reason of my visit. He listened carefully until I finished and finally showed him the video. He stayed silent and thinking. He said, you're not gonna like this. I just thought, what now? Frank called the receptionist to bring Harry, another coach and Baldi's friend. He has a big beard. Frank asked him to tell me about Baldi's girlfriend. Fasten your seatbelts. This is good. According to Harry, Baldi is heads over heels for Jane and Frank confirmed it. He told me Baldi had many complaints specially from female members, but for the last months he has changed. No complaints, and he's very professional to all members. And Harry told me something that made my jaw drop. Baldi is trying to marry Jane by baby trapping her. I was processing this information when I felt something starting from my chest. It climbed up my throat and finally blowed up in my mouth. I laughed. I swear I was joker madly laughing. I even teared a bit. Frank and Harry were very confused. I thought, oh sweet karma. Thank you. After I calmed, but with a big grin on my face, Harry asked what was going on. And Frank explained, this is Baldi's girlfriend's husband. Harry made a shocked face. Oh man, this is bad. This is really messed up, Harry left. Next we discussed about firing Baldy. Frank said he has to report the situation to the coach association, not real name, and he surely has to fire him because Jane was a gym member or Frank's gym could have legal repercussions. About his license as coach, I need to make a legal document explaining Baldy is the reason of my divorce, the key number of my divorce case, and the video. My attorney will give the video to the coach association's attorney. I can't share it. Baldi will lose his license from that association, but he can go to another association and apply for another license. It'd take months, though. I asked if Baldi can appeal. 
Frank said he might, but it would be a waste of energy. The association does not tolerate such conduct. Also, he doesn't have the money to pay for somebody who represents him. That reminded me of the residential area where he entered with Jane. I thought Baldy was wealthy. Frank brought his face closer to me. What residential area? I showed on the maps app. You tailed them to this place. I did. On D-Day minus one, Frank got angry. That's where my late father's house is. After Frank's father passed away, he inherited the house. All the equipment that's obsolete or needs repair goes to that house. He'd lend Baldy the key to go and keep some stuff occasionally, but he does not have permission to stay there. He surely has a copy of the key, and he might be living there illegally. He's going to investigate this further. I'll be easy since there are tons of cameras in that place. I was leaving the gym when I heard Mr. O.P. Mr. O.P. Wait, it was Harry. He told me he was sorry about what's happening. Baldy never told him who was his girlfriend. He just said that he met her at mall. I thanked him and took a step towards the exit. He rushed. Can you tell me what happened? I told him pretty much what you heard. He was slept my wife. And now I'm divorcing her. Another step. What will happen to Baldy? That depends on Frank and the coach association. I tried to take another step. But how are you handling it? Oak, now this is strange. I stared at Harry and remembered Baldy went to my house twice. I said, you called Baldy and he's on his way here, right? You are just buying time. Am I wrong? He made a guilty face. Please, Mr. O.P., talk to him. He's really desperate. He was crying yesterday. His girl, I mean your wife, isn't returning his calls. To Tell me, why should I care if he's rotting in hell? I'll be here with you. So you don't be scared, I laughed, scared. Of that weakling. He didn't told you I kicked him out of my house naked, right? Harry didn't believe me. Fine. Let's see what he wants. I saw there are cameras where we were talking and sat in front of a table in a reception. I don't think Baldy is stupid enough to attack me, but who knows? Besides, I'm really curious about what he wants. He came running ten minutes later and saw me waiting for him. He extended his hand. I crossed my arms and left him with a hand hanging. What the hell you want? I looked angrily directly to his eyes. He sat in front of me. Listen, buddy. Stop right there. We're not buddies, Mr. S. The janitor is my buddy. You are not, he seemed apologetic. Oh, my bad. I want to say I'm sorry for everything. I never wanted to hurt you and I really care about Jane. Well, you just said three lies to my face. You are not sorry. You did mean to destroy my life and you just care about yourself. He changed from apologetic to annoyed. Oak, whatever man. Just tell me where Jane is. Last time I saw her was when I kicked her out of my house after I kicked you out naked. I know Harry was listening. Baldy's face changed color to red. That was a cheap shot. I should sue you. As far as I know, you entered my home illegally, and perhaps you were abused, my wife. I have videos of you getting out, but you didn't sign in. He changed again. Oak, oak, I'm sorry. Tell me what you want from me. Please tell Jane I need to speak to her. In that moment, Frank came in a rush. I guess he saw through the cameras that Baldy showed up. Everything oak here. Everything is fine, Frank. I was just telling this sissy what I want. I stand up and talk close to Baldy's face. What I want is what is coming for you. What you deserve. What the law has prepared for you. I want to crush your dreams just like you did with mine. You want kids. Guess what? You won't. And you will never have, Baldy said. What's that supposed to? But Frank asked him to see him in his office. Harry looked impressed. He grabbed Baldy's arm and pulled him, dude, you're in deep shit. I finally left. D-Day plus 12, Tuesday. I feel I am ready to face Jane now. I'm till grinning while I type this. So, how have you been?